Welcome to the Conejo Valley Unified School District. My name is Joni Burns. I'm the district's recycling coordinator. The purpose of this presentation is to share the results of waste audits conducted at nine CVUSD schools in October of 2012. I'd like to start out by providing some background information on the CVUSD Recycles program. Then I'll explain the process we use to conduct the waste audits, followed by the audit results and what they mean, or could mean, for CVUSD schools. I'll close by laying out our plans and next steps for the CVUSD Recycles program. The CVUSD Recycles program has been made possible through a grant from the California Department of Resources Recovery and Recycling, or CalRecycle. The grant was awarded to the City of Thousand Oaks, but it's ultimately a cooperative effort between the City and the School District. The primary focus of the CVUSD Recycles program is beverage containers, cans and bottles, eligible for the California Redemption Value, or CRV. In addition to benefiting the environment, the potential to earn money for the school by collecting and redeeming CRV items provides another great incentive to recycle. The grant funds are being used to purchase recycling equipment for each of the district's 28 schools. The program also has a major outreach component. Schools are getting support, advice, tools, and resources aimed at helping them to establish recycling programs, improve recycling behavior, and increase recycling awareness among their students, staff, and even their broader communities. The grant also allowed the district to hire me, a part-time recycling coordinator, to lead these efforts. A key component of the program and the focus of the rest of this presentation is waste audits. Waste audits are a great way to gain a better understanding of the amount of waste being generated, as well as what it's made up of. This helps to inform decisions such as where to focus future outreach efforts and what materials to focus on for recycling. Going forward, schools will continue to share information about their recycling programs, including the amount of material they are recycling, so we can evaluate the effectiveness of our efforts. As mentioned, waste audits are a valuable means of gaining an understanding of the quantity and quality of the waste stream, which in turn helps in developing and refining recycling programs. We conducted audits at nine CVUSD schools. We asked the schools to set aside an entire day's worth of trash and recycling. Both the trash and recycling streams were audited so we could get a comprehensive understanding of everything that was coming out of the school and whether materials were being put in the proper container. Trash and trash, recycling and recycling. All of the trash was sorted into different categories, such as paper, bottles, cans, and other recyclable materials, compostable materials, and unused and unopened food. The recycling stream was sorted into different categories of recyclables, again things like paper, bottles, and cans, however non-recyclable materials such as compostables, food, and trash were not differentiated. These were simply considered contamination in the recycling stream. While composting is a form of recycling, commercial composting service is not currently available in the Conejo Valley. By sorting and quantifying the amount of compostable material in the school's waste streams, we were able to demonstrate the important role composting could play in the district's overall waste management strategy. This will also be valuable to potential composting service providers in terms of anticipating the volume of compostables schools are likely to generate. These pictures provide an idea of how the audits were set up and conducted. We even convinced some kids to chip in and help out. And we had students stop by throughout all of the audits, which provided a great opportunity to tell and show them what we were doing and, importantly, what we were finding. Once the waste audits were complete, we compiled the results. In addition to showing the makeup of the school's waste and recycling streams, the data was used to estimate things like the amount of paper, cans, and bottles being thrown away each school year, and the potential for schools to increase the amount of material they divert from landfills by recycling more. Importantly, the audits also allowed us to determine just how many cans and bottles are currently being thrown away or recycled at the schools. This information is critical to the CVUSD Recycles program. We have a goal of recycling 80% of the cans and bottles generated at the schools. Before we get into the audit results, here's a bit more information on some of the categories we used for the audits. This provides an idea of what was and what was not included in each of the categories and why. Results. This slide shows the composition of the trash streams from all nine schools combined. It didn't vary much from school to school. With the exception of one school, 
the majority of the waste stream at the schools was compostable materials. In the case of that one exception, slightly more trash was found than compostables, but the two of them together still made up over 70% of the total waste stream. Other big categories were paper and unused and unopened food. Keep in mind, all of these results are based on weight. This explains why things like plastic bottles and aluminum cans represent such a relatively small fraction of the waste stream. They just don't weigh much, particularly not compared to wet, sloppy food waste. The amount of recyclable material found in the trash varied quite a bit, anywhere from 5.92% to 29.65% of the material found in the trash actually could have been recycled had it been placed in the recycling bin. The amounts and types of unused and unopened food were a surprise to many. Much of what we found is coming from home. We're working with schools to help students and parents become more aware of the amount of food that's being wasted and what they can do about it. The recycling streams were much more variable from school to school. As you can see in this graphic, some schools had a considerable amount of non-recyclable materials or contamination in the recycling stream. In some instances, this was because the schools work on the assumption that the majority of what is generated in classrooms is likely to be recyclable, in particular paper, so everything from the classrooms is placed in the school's recycling container. As we learn, a lot of the material coming from classrooms isn't actually recyclable after all. This graphic shows what percentage of each school's waste stream is currently being diverted from landfills and recycled instead. This is based on the amount of recyclable material actually found in the school's recycling stream. Any trash found in the recycling stream was not counted towards the diversion figure. This graphic shows the potential amount each school could recycle if all recyclable material was placed in the recycling bin. It's probably not realistic to expect any school to recycle 100% of the material they're generating, but it's a good goal to set. Importantly, no school will be able to achieve higher than a 50% diversion rate, or in most cases even a 40% diversion rate, without having a composting program in place. So what does this all mean to the CVUSD Recycles program? On average, we're over halfway to our goal of recovering and recycling 80% of the cans and bottles generated at schools. However, as this graphic shows, recovery rates are highly variable from school to school, and there's definite room for some schools to recycle more. If the schools were able to recover 100% of cans and bottles they generate and redeem them for California redemption value, the amount of money they could generate over the course of the school year is pretty significant. Right now, a lot of that money is just going in the trash. So what's next? I and my counterparts at the City of Thousand Oaks will continue to work with the schools to expand and improve their recycling programs. We'll be collecting information from them on an ongoing basis to track their progress on increasing the amount of cans and bottles they recover. We'll also be providing incentives aimed at keeping people engaged and getting more people involved in their school's recycling efforts. Keep up on the latest news, watch our school's progress, and find great resources to help your school recycle at the CVUSD Recycles website www.cvusdrecycles.org. You're also welcome to contact me for further information. Thanks for your interest.